In this demonstration we're going to look at the new ways that you can use to organize the tools in your tool database. To access the tool database you have a few options uh, but the two principal ones are either from the tool paths menu at the top or alternatively from the tool database icon on the toolpath tab. So if I click that I open up straight away into my tool database and you can see here that uh, one of the things to initially note is that there is a new field uh, in your tool database that allows you to add any text notes you want for your tool. So that's completely free for you to use for any reminders or notes about the purpose of a particular tool that you've created in your database and that now gets stored along with the normal tool definition. But perhaps the most significant change uh, is that we've uh, created the ability to group your tools according to any categorization that you like. Uh, what I've done in the uh, initial example here is simply group together tools that have common geometry. Um, but what we're going to do now is we're going to show you how you can use the system to also uh, group together tools that uh, maybe relate to a particular material in terms of their feeds and speeds. So I'm going to select the end mills group at the top here and with that selected click on the new new group button and that immediately creates a group for me and is ready for me to change the name. So I'm going to call this one soft wood and then I'm going to click the end mills again and uh, new, mill, uh, new group again. You'll notice that because I have that one selected it creates the new group directly underneath it for me automatically and we'll call this one hardwood. Okay. Now I'm going to assume that the two uh, currently defined end mills are, have appropriate settings for say the hardwood. So to put them inside the hardwood uh, group I just click and drag uh, into the lower half of the hardwood label there and Aspire moves them now into that group. I'm going to just take a copy now of this smaller end mill just by clicking the copy and drag that copy into the softwood. Uh, group underneath. And what we're going to do here is it's a soft wood so what we're going to do is increase the feed rate to say uh, 200. Apply that. So this now is assuming we're going to cut a lot faster using this end mill. Um, if I OK this now and we come back in and we select our boundary here that we're going to run a profile around. If I select my profile tool here and we select the softwood end mill here. That will obviously be applied to that setting. But say I come back to this later on now, I have two end mills in my tool database with the same name. Uh, and obviously I can click edit here and I can see exactly what the settings are at any time. But also to assist you when you look at a toolpath perhaps some time later after you've created it, um, we need, we've added the ability, if you just hover your mouse over the name you'll see that it pops up a tooltip for you there which shows you the location in the tool database that that tool was when it was added to this toolpath. So in this case I can clearly see that this is the end mill definition I've created for softwood uh, and hopefully that will help you to keep uh, your toolpaths much more uh, logically organized.